Hello and welcome to this episode. Today we're going to be talking about asset management. Asset management is obviously a huge industry, but also it's one of the most conservative industries out there, I think. The world is changing, the industry is getting bigger, and so is the need for new technologies, for innovation, for new digital things. And these are some of the things that we would like to discuss today. Recently, we at DataArt did a little survey where we interviewed asset managers and asked them about the challenges that they're facing, some of their technology needs, and actually where they stand on custom software in their business. Um, we invited Alexei Miller, the managing director of DataArt, to go over some of the key findings of that survey, among other things. So Alexei, hi, thank you for being here. Hi, um, thank you. Let's dive right into it, shall Let's we? Let's do it. Our survey that I've just alluded to actually shows that over 85% of asset managers actually rely on custom software. What do you think will happen to the rest of the industry players if they don't follow that trend? Um, I suspect they'll be just fine because uh, asset management industry, like many other industry, is populated with extremely smart people. Uh, and uh, if those 15% uh, have survived without custom technology until now, they probably know what they're doing. But all jokes aside, I think it's worthwhile to examine why so many of the investment management firms rely on custom technologies and what why I think that number will be creeping up uh, over the next few years, little by little. Although, obviously, for reasons um, good or bad, there will always be holdouts, and there, there are definitely good reasons for that. So, as you've mentioned just now, the size of the industry is growing rapidly, and so is complexity. The new instruments that are being traded, um, investment managers becoming more global, more diversified, they're under heavy regulate, regulatory scrutiny all over the world. So what they need to do and how they need to do it um, is growing in complexity every day. And it is often the case that outside of a few very standardized functions such as portfolio accounting, uh, perhaps uh, investor relationship management, many of the front to middle to back office functions are actually um, the requirements are ahead of what uh, off-the-shelf products can deliver. In other words, product companies are not keeping up with the demand for change. And that for, that is number one reason why uh, so many firms have to rely on um, custom software. They just, just can't buy. I often say, despite being in the custom development business, I always say, buy if you can. It's likely to be a lot less painful, uh, possibly more expensive, but certainly a lower risk and require, will require a lower uh, amount of headache on your part as a client. But if you cannot buy, then you have to do custom development and you have to do it right. And so a lot of our clients and a lot of um, asset management firms who are not our clients have to develop because of this uh, growing complexity. Number two reason is I think along with the rest of investment industry, investment management industry, product providers, off-the-shelf product providers have been a little bit slow to embrace new technology, slower than the rest of the world in embracing cloud, um, slower to invest significantly in user-friendly modern UI UX, uh, slow to uh, adopt what can be done with the modern AI ML technologies and so on and so forth. So clients of theirs who feel like they can take advantage of that, of those technologies, can't readily buy it from uh, product companies and they have to innovate, uh, innovate themselves. The great uh, asset management conservatism ha is having a role here, but also, also um, technical uh, resource supply. Uh, there is severe competition for technical talent and so product companies cannot always hire who they need to hire and you know clients sometimes are forced to do things themselves or with partners such as DataArt or or many others. So in a nutshell there's a ton of reasons why firms continue to invest in custom technology and like I said I, I expect that more and more firms because their size and complexity is growing as well, will join those those ranks. But certainly not everybody, everybody. And those whose business model lends itself well to be supported by off-the-shelf product as they exist today, given the relatively slow pace of their of their advancement, will be just fine. Not it, it, custom development is not for everyone. I always tell our clients, like I said, if you cannot, if you don't have to do it, don't do it. 
Interesting, because I actually have a, a bit of a tricky follow-up question. When do you think asset managers absolutely have to avoid custom software? Any? Uh, the answer the answer to that is the same as um, any other um, client, whether it's in healthcare or media or manufacturing or uh, indeed asset management. And number one uh, criteria for um, success in custom software development is for client to be ready in terms of their own organizational resources. I mean, it sounds like a circular answer. Uh, don't start it until you're ready. But what being ready means really, really matters. So um, a, a company like an asset management firm has to be ready in terms of their ability to invest. Financial planning, multi-year planning is really important. Having in-house technical resources and the capability to keep track with the development, take over certain parts of it when required, direct it properly. Having those in-house skills is really important. Understanding of the product and project management methodologies, how to shape the product so it actually gets done and gets done on time. It's very important to have it on time. Knowing how to manage security and compliance regime, um, given that your development is likely to be somewhere and your systems are likely to be hosted somewhere else and so on. So all of these things, you have to have them in place in order to embark on a project like this. Starting without those things is a is a risk and one th one thing that asset management firms in particular uh is, they, they know is risk and so i think in this industry it's a little bit easier to talk to people in terms of um avoiding those risks because that's the language that's very natural to them you mentioned choosing um, a software engineering partner so what do you think should asset managers absolutely keep in mind when choosing a right software uh, engineering partner? So uh, I'd say, uh, again, risk and efficiency are the two uh, dimensions in which they should look, look at this. Mm -hmm. Risk, um, there is product risk. Will this be done on time, on budget, well, with good quality and, and so on and so forth? That's classic problem of software, software engineering and um, vendors should be evaluated through the prism of the assurances that they can give given their credibility um, their expertise resources etc of getting it done on time on budget etc but also there's um information security aspect to risk does doing development globally or in distributed fashion expose the client to unwanted unwanted risk and we see our clients take it extremely seriously and we have to as a supplier as a service provider we have to invest substantially to making sure that infrastructure is robust and um, our processes are properly organized so that our clients in this particular sector can have the peace of mind um, because they will accept nothing else and uh, any asset management firms is well advised to look at firms who make those investments because otherwise the risk is too high. That is sort of stated the obvious, but sometimes is overlooked. And then there's efficiency component to it, which is, does the firm have another enough background in this particular sector to move along quickly? Because speed is everything right now. If you can't get a job done in a few short months, you probably don't have to get this job done because the, the world has moved, moved on. And this is a very specific industry. You need to understand the terms. You need to understand the environment in which they, they work, both business and compliance, regulatory. Uh, you need to understand the third-party systems, market data, uh, third-party products that uh, the, your system will likely have to interface with. You, you don't want to pay your supplier for the time they need to figure it all out. You want to deal with a supplier that has that knowledge built in. That's where efficiency uh, comes from. And the, the, finally, efficiency comes from being able to change course quickly. So they're rigid suppliers, they have a certain process, like a container ship, it goes in one direction, you can't stop it, and it eventually arrives at its port of a destination. There's value in that. That's how you move along huge amounts of cargo. And there's smaller ships that can change course and direction very, very quickly. So for investment management firms who on average tend to be somewhat smaller organizations, I'm excluding the, the very large uh, giants of the industry, uh, on, on average um, investment management firm, especially in the alternative space, are relatively small and nimble. So they want to deal with the supplier who is able to be as nimble as they need to be. Another thing I really wanted to touch upon is something that came up in the survey a lot. 
uh, and that is data and data analytics. Somehow everything seems to be revolving around data, uh, no matter how you slice it. So it seems to be a massive um, area of, of investment, a massive area of need. Um, every project sort of circles around that, that need. Would you comment just why do you think that is? Well, it's natural for investment management industry. I've heard our contacts, our clients in the industry kind of chuckle at the big data phenomenon a few years ago. And everyone would say, well, in investment in the investment world, we were doing big data before it was called big data. And we never thought it was it was nat natural, natural for us. So this is one example where the rest of the world is kind of catching up to some of the techniques and tools that uh, investment management world and finance more broadly, certainly on the trading and capital market side, have been using for years and years. Uh, while asset management is a little bit more conservative, a little slower with some of the other technology here, I think it's been running somewhat ahead of the of the industry, simply because so many of the investment decisions are, are, are made based on processing huge amounts of, of data. So it's very natural for the for the industry. What, what's the interesting dynamic that we observe now is uh, after having invested because it's natural for their business in proprietary tools or finance specific uh, data and analytics tools. Many firms have now come to realize that there are third party open source technologies that, that, are, that are potentially more efficient and certainly cheaper than many of those in-house investments that they've made over the years. So many are faced with a conundrum of switching from something that they've been investing to for 10 or 15 or 20 years in favor of these shiny modern new tools that the rest of the world is, is quickly using. And there's not a, not a single answer uh, which approach is right because you have a, a lot of legacy investment, valuable investment that is there for a good good reason. And we see firms uh, make those decisions quite thoughtfully and we see it part of our mission to help them make those decisions with no one-size-fits-all uh, solution but taking into account what um, each organization has in place individually. Um, it's, it's a very interesting phenomenon to, to observe. Uh, data is indeed everywhere and not just in analyzing that data but methods of acquiring data, the whole world of what's called alternative data is exploding and has been very active for some years now. So definitely this space was hot and will remain hot for years and years. Well, I think that about covers it for today. Alexei, great stuff as always. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.